welcome back um in this video today i want to show you how you figured out plot decision boundary so previously what you did was calculate the cost and the gradient in this video you have to plot the decision boundary based on the output that you found um not, no 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 remember this the decision boundary does not depend on the data set. The decision boundary depends on your parameter theta. So based on the parameter theta that you were able to find to minimize the cost, you will plot the decision boundary. All right, now, um, just, as, um, just as my first guess, I would think that the decision boundary would be something which would trace the outline of the path of my mouse. So it's probably going to go this way and then down this way and then so it should sort of should should be like a curve. Um, but let's see what is happening. That, that That's what my intuition says. I know for a fact that the answer says just to use a straight line, but I think we could have made it a better one if we had a curved line, but we'll go for that later. Anyways, so um, we used fmin unc to find the parameters theta now once we find the parameters theta we will be able to find the decision boundary remember this your theta the parameters theta they get updated to minimize the cost in initially the cost function the decision boundary that you have based on your parameters theta that is not going to give you the best decision boundary right so in order to do that let's let's run let's run the let's run the code and see what is happening. Okay. We have our figure one, which shows the data set. Let's continue on. Initial theta um, uh, that gives you the cost and that gives you the gradient. We, if we continue on, we get our decision boundary plotted. The question is, how did we find this blue line? I'm gonna explain that. But before that, I wanna show you something. So we ran fmin unc, and after running fmin unc, we found that our theta were, were these three numbers. Now, this corresponds to theta zero. This corresponds to theta one. This corresponds to theta two, right? So based on the parameters theta, we will get this straight line uh, decision boundary. Now we plot that straight line using the f, uh, uh, the function for plot decision boundary that takes in theta x and y. But before that, we need to know uh, the mechanism how you get a line like that. Now for that, I have printed this PDF. Okay, let me zoom out. Now, this is a similar example where we have x1 and x2, right? So this is this is our exam 1, our exam 2. What we see here is that our parameters theta naught, theta 1, theta 2, had they been something like minus 3, 1, and 1, which in our case is minus 25, 0 0.2, and 0 0.2. Here we go for convenience i'll have them side by side okay so this is your theta naught theta one theta two theta naught theta one theta two how do you find the decision boundary that you found here well you simply set this to zero which means your theta transpose x is set to zero minus three plus x one plus x two is equal to zero now um for our case then we would simply set minus 25.16 plus 0 0.206 x1 plus 0 0.201 x2 is equal to zero have we done that? Yeah, in the next page, I did that. So instead of using the actual values, I just wrote theta naught, theta one, and theta two, right? Okay, but the question now is, how do you plot it? Well, the decision boundary, if you look at it, this depends, I mean, we could, we could make a linear relationship between exam two and exam one. It doesn't matter if it exists or not, but if we were to assume that the decision boundary is linear, well, we can have a straight line where exam two is a function of exam one, right? So that's exactly what we did here. Um, we have the equation set to zero 
and we want to have x2 on the left hand side we did that here and x1 on the right hand side we did that here right okay so this is simply algebra and then we come to this expression here where x2 is equal to negative 1 over theta 2 times theta naught plus theta 1 x1 so in in octave you don't have theta 0 what you have is theta 1 the indexing starts from 1 so if we go for the indexing then we'll have theta naught is theta 1 theta 1 is theta 2 theta 2 is theta 3 similarly um, in the plot decision boundary instead of having x we have something called plot x this is simply the variable for storing x okay now this sort of gives you the idea behind how you would plot the decision boundary if you were not doing it in octave but of course in octave where you have to program the thing it's going to get a bit different okay so let's see how we did that in octave um hopefully i will not need this for now i am going to i'm going to just show the octave uh the octave code okay so the plot decision boundary first calls plot data x um uh, taking all the columns of all the rows of x for columns two and three and um, and having y okay so how does this work well um, we already have this one here right so just um, just if we, if we if we call the function plot data well the plot data function is just gonna it's just gonna do that right okay now notice one thing here right so here you have x you have x i think i think we could have just called we could have just called x right no okay so this is interesting so check this out x is assumed to be a m by 2 matrix m is 100 2 so this has to be an m by 2 matrix so this is a 100 by 2 matrix had we only called x since we updated x this is not going to be an m by 2 matrix anymore it will be an m by 3 therefore in order to make it an m by 2 matrix we specify that we're only going to take these two columns all right now what do we have if we have that x the, okay well the size of x2 what does this mean it basically saying if the columns of x is less than or equal to 3 we are going to run this block of code why is it 3 well if it is less than or equal to 3 then you effectively have two features the size of x has um, rows and columns right 2 calls the columns we know there are three columns column 1 exists of nothing but ones column two exists of the exam one score and column three that contains the exam two scores if we have the number of columns is less than or equal to three we will be able to establish a linear relationship and if it was more than three we would not be able to do that we wouldn't we would need a what would we need we would need a contour plot right we would need to see we would need to see it in a different from a different we would we would have we would have three axes then think about it like that exam one and exam two and then exam three how are you going to have that in three different axes other than having a 3d plot essentially what we're saying here is we will be able to plot it in 2d okay so we're plotting it in 2d and we're plotting a linear graph that's it right now what we need is uh, an x-axis which we have stored in plot x a y-axis which we have stored in plot y now let's not get confused by that this plot y and plot x has been made in such in, in this format so that we can have a straight line where exam 2 and exam 1 score assumes to have a relationship effectively practically it doesn't but based on the parameters if we were to plot it then this would be the straight line equation now how do we set the axes that's a good question so 
check this out. In order to plot this straight line, we only need the endpoints. We only need to know the minimum or the maximum scores, <clears throat> right? So we are taking exam two, sorry, we are taking exam one. We're finding the minimum value of exam one and we're taking exam one and we're finding the maximum value of exam one. And then we are increasing that, um, that range by negative two for the minimum and positive two for the maximum. Uh, the, the plus two and the minus two, that is so that our edge cases are not the beginning and the end of the, uh, 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 yeah, basically they're, they're not the beginning and the end of it, right? Okay, <clears throat> now, okay, so what do we, what do we have here? Whew, we have plot y. Uh, so then plot y is basically the exam two score. Well, plot y, we will get that from here x2 is equal to minus 1 over theta 2. Uh, that's basically that equation here, right? Okay. And then we can plot uh, x against y. So you have x values, you have y values, and the only two edge, uh, the only two endpoints you're going to get comes from plot x. So this is essentially just a straight line connecting two points. Okay. We set our legend and then we set our axes. Well, I guess um, it's a good idea to also specify what the axes are going to be. I don't necessarily agree with this as of yet. I don't have a better solution to this either, but I think, um, but I think ideally we would want to have it so that this is a bit more flexible. I mean this, so that this gets updated based on plot X and plot Y. Yeah. Okay. So. Since we have three columns, we only need to be concerned with size x2 less than equal to three, right? We don't need to have, um, we don't need to consider what happens if size of x2 is greater than three. So we're not gonna check out the else case yet. I think we're gonna need this in a later video. If we do, we'll look at it then. All right, so now you have the walkthrough. I think you should be able to figure the rest of it out pretty, pretty easily. All right, good luck and I'll see you in the next video.